Everything you know about the end times is wrong. When it comes to the most common outlook about the end times, a whole lot of us have been what I would label left behind eyes. Left Behind was a series of books published first in the 90s and continued over 13 volumes, which sold over 80 million copies. The books were followed by three movies, which were widely panned as pretty bad as far as movies goes, if we're being honest. But the point is, a lot of how we think about what we label as the end times is derived from the assumptions put in the fictional account by those books. And on one hand, I really don't have a problem with that. It was a creative, very lucrative idea the authors had to turn what their understanding of what the Bible teaches into a compelling series of novels. More power to them for that matter. The downside is the majority of people likely don't know the difference between what the Bible actually teaches and how the Left Behind series interprets what the Bible teaches. So in the interest of biblical integrity, not to mention intellectual integrity, I want to give you a couple of quick things to think about when it comes to the end times issues. Uh, that you need to know because if Jesus didn't warn about anything else, and history proves him right on this, he warned that end times and prophecy stuff is fertile ground for deception and misunderstanding, and we don't want that to happen. First, there are different schools of thought around end times issues. You need to know that. The Left Behind series and the ideas it inspires are a fictionalized version of a particular school of thought around end time subjects called dispensationalism, and that's exactly what it is, a school of thought held by some scholars, preachers, and teachers. It is arguably the most popular way of looking at these things, but it's still one school of thought among several. And there have been many other schools of thought throughout church history which have enjoyed popularity as well. Now, the left behind way of looking at things is not the only game in town. And on closer examination, it's likely not the best game in town. Simply put, dispensationalism breaks up the Bible into distinct times or dispensations where God deals with people in different ways. For example, there was a season when God dealt directly with the Jews. We are in a time now where he's dealing directly with the Gentiles. He will go back to dealing with the Jews after the rapture happens and the seven year tribulation period goes on. That's what the whole title of Left Behind is based on. There will be a time when millions of people simply disappear and things start happening with the Jewish people. Now I have no problem saying, okay, well that's fair game, that's an interpretation. There are a lot of preachers and teachers and professors who look at the Bible that way. And some of them can make a pretty good case for it. But it's important to know it can be and is challenged by some very smart and biblically committed pastors and teachers and professors. And it's unfortunate that many people don't even know that there are serious and solid challenges leveled against the dispensational model. I think that's unhealthy. Even if you're a convinced dispensationalist, you should arrive at that confidence on the post side of hearing the objections to the position. You owe it to yourself to be informed about these things because it protects you from deception and confusion that I've seen get inside people's heads when it comes to in times ideas and predictions. I've been amazed at how many people in my own church have told me uh, after presented an alternative to dispensationalism, they had never heard the stuff I shared before. Uh, what did I share? And that's what I will file under point two, amazing fulfillment of prophecy that's already happened in the past. Now what most people don't know is that the events Jesus outlines of what's considered his big end time speech recorded in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, and Luke chapter 21 with the little parts in chapter 17 of Luke, which is known as the Olivet Discourse, had a remarkable fulfillment in the past. And this is so evident and uncanny that there's an, another school of thought labeled in biblical and end time studies called preterism, which is taken from the Latin, which means past. And here's the thing, preterists can make a very, very compelling case for many of Jesus' words being fulfilled in the past. And they can say that because those events were painstakingly recorded by a Jewish historian named Josephus. In the Olivet Discourse, Jesus warns about deception. He says there will be signs of the political world, earthquakes, famines, wars, uprisings, instability, persecutions of believers. He says there will be signs in the heavens. And most importantly, he says the temple will be torn down with not one brick left on another. Josephus records all of these things happening in the events of the Jewish war with the Romans during the years 66 to 70 AD. Now many of us are familiar with the tearing down of the temple because it's one of the most attested events of the ancient world. But many of us are not familiar with the other signs that happened exactly as Jesus said they would. There was a terrible persecution with, which killed both uh, the apostle Peter and Paul. Uh, there was instability in the Roman empire during that time. Rome had four emperors in one year. There was a siege laid to 
Jerusalem and was then called off, which Christians in the city of Jerusalem took as a signal to get out of the city while they can. Listen to what Jesus warned about. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city, because these are the days of vengeance, so that all things which are written will be fulfilled. Christians in Jerusalem use those very words to come up with an escape plan, and they ran at that time, and many of them saved their lives while many Jewish people lost their lives because they stayed around during a second siege that the Romans laid on Jerusalem. Josephus even records signs in the heavens. He said people claimed to have seen chariots and soldiers in the clouds. He records these words, listen to this. There was a star resembling a sword which stood over the city and a comet that continued a whole year. Another time he says that the temple was lit up in the middle of the night like it was the middle of the day. In other words, it was uncanny how many of the exact predictions Jesus gave that were fulfilled in the Jewish war. But many Christian people aren't told this. They're not told that there's an entire theory of biblical interpretation that views the end this way. And frankly, I think that's biblical and pastoral malpractice to not at least make people aware even if you are a dispensationalist. People's minds and outlooks are better shaped when they know what the debates and perspectives actually are. Do yourself a favor. If you're interested in the whole end times thing, open yourself up to various outlooks, especially preterism, or what is known as partial preterism. It will round things out and help you to avoid being deceived, which is what Jesus warned against. I hope that helps. See you next time.